Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. We have done quite a few EBL battery reviews on the channel, and it's time to do another one. We have done uh, AA batteries that are consumable, disposable, AA batteries that are rechargeable, and now we've got the power station. I'm pretty excited. Let's take a look at this thing. It is bright orange. You are not gonna miss this thing in your camping kit. You'll know at all times exactly where it is. Just from the outside of the box, we have quite a bit of information to share with you. It is 330 watts. It is 288 watt hours. Wireless charging, solar charging, LED lighting, and PD quick charging. So there's a couple of things that really interest me right off the bat on this one here. So solar charging, that means that you can plug a solar panel into it and you don't need a charge controller. That's fantastic. We'll test that out. PD quick charging. This could mean a lot of things for a lot of different reasons. I'm thinking we could power our QRP radios directly off the PD port but it also has regular 12 volt ports. What it powers? Well, gee, I mean, it powers anything that is uh, battery powered. It powers anything that is 12 volt, and it also powers anything that is 120 volts AC. And that's pretty interesting stuff right there in and of itself. How long does it take to charge? From the carport at 12 volts, it takes seven to nine hours when the car is running. I would not, they're right. I would not charge this with the car off. You just drain your battery. From the wall charger, it takes six to seven hours. And then from solar panels, 100 watt solar panels, it takes five to seven hours. So your best bet is to charge it over solar. Let's get into it. User's manual. <laughs> oh, it's smaller on the inside. That, that's actually a really good form factor. I mean, my hand for scale, that's not a bad deal at all. I like that. Obviously, it doesn't weigh that much. You can see I'm not grunting and straining to move it around. I like the fact that the cell phone charging happens right on the top without having one of those built-in handles. There are a couple other black and orange models of portable batteries that have a fixed handle on the top, and that causes a couple of problems for me. One is you can't stack it, and when I like to pack, I like to stack. All right, outside of the battery, we get this nice little white box. Let's see what's in the box. What's in the box, dude? Upside down. There we go. All right, we have our charger. And the charger has an AC plug on one side and a barrel jack on the other side. That's quite a big barrel jack, too. And then we have the car charger and a barrel jack, so we can plug it into the car like it showed on the box. And we have the AC plug to go into the wall wart. And then we have a pair of, I think these are called MC4 connectors that goes in. And you have to be really careful with these because this, this is not always positive, this is not always negative. And you can tell because you can plug them right into each other. So make sure you get the polarity correct from your solar panel before you just go willy-nilly plugging these things in. You might need an adapter to change that around. It might have reverse polarity protection. So I guess I have to check the owner's manual. It would be awesome if this thing had reverse polarity protection. And by protection, I mean like, let's just switch it. All right, for all of us power nerds, myself included, this is actually a really good charger, wow. Output, 15 volts, four amps, 60 watts. That's pretty cool. Four amps is a respectable amount for a charger this size. And at 15 volts, it'll charge your lithium iron phosphate batteries that accept four amps of input and that power cord. But, but we are hams. We can adapt power cords pretty easily. All right, sometimes, I guess especially when dealing with electricity, you do need to read the manual. The solar charge input, 12 volts to 24 volts DC, four amps, 60 watts max. So no more than a 60 watt panel. And a lot of your panels are 100 watts and it even says 100 watts on the box so I don't know why it says that but uh, you can run a 12 or a 24 volt panel so further along in the owner's manual it even says again 100 watt solar panel and then on the very next page from that it says support 60 80 100 watt 120 watt max solar panels so we're up to 120 watts now okay I have looked all over the owner's manual and I do not see anything at all about those mc4 plugs however this is of major note to me do not put the machine in a microwave oven or a pressurized container. I have a microwave behind me and I was I was tempted, but not anymore. Hey, wait, no, don't. Oh man. A quick walk around the outside. EBL on the back side of it, nothing really written there. It has some fans inside there and some heat sinks inside there for all of its charging on board -osities. On this side here, it has a, another fan. Well, I guess it's the same fan. Uh, so through here, over the heat sink and out. And on the front, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before I get yelled at by the YouTube police, I gotta get that out of the way. Okay, on the front side, we have 
This is DC output. So 12 volts, 5 amps, 12 volts, 5 amps, 12 volts, 10 amps. It's interesting you get more amps out of the cigarette lighter socket. We have one, two, three USB 3.0 and one USB type C. And then we have an AC out and we have a 12 to 24 volt in and a flashlight button up here. Let's turn it on and see how much charge it came with from the factory. It's at 100%. I did not expect that. At 12 volts, five amps, that is definitely going to be five to 10 watts QRP rated, but this 12 volt, 10 amp socket, we can use this for our Zygu G90. The G90's owner's manual says, Eight amps is what is required to transmit at 20 watts, so we will definitely test that out out in the field. I'd be able to charge my cell phone or my laptop. I'd be able to run any AC-powered devices that don't really require an earth ground, but they won't complain if it's missing anyhow. And then I can run the radio. So let's do some ham radio stuff with this. I have a cigarette lighter plug adapter plugged into the cigarette lighter plug, obviously. And it says total 10 amps. So you can do five amps and five amps out of the DC barrel jacks, or you can do 10 amps total out of the cigarette lighter plug, or you can do both of those together for 10 amps, but you can't do all three at once at 10 amps total. Either way, we've got this at 10 amps, and I've got my friend the Zygu G90 up here, which draws eight amps, and it is looking pretty good. You can see right here my signal strength meter, and I do not have any noise at all coming out of this thing on 20 meters, which is the band I'm running today. And I'm gonna do a little parks on the air hunting, so I'm gonna take a look at that and see if I can find somebody. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf, Park to Park. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf, Park to Park. Roger, Roger, Kilo, Mike 9, Golf, Park to Park. I've got you 59 into K3013. QSL? Kilo Mike 9 Golf in Kilo 3013. All right, copy the 5 1. Thanks for the contact. Have fun at the park. Thank you. So, if we take a look, we are at 7 watts draw. I'm going to find that open frequency 14289. You can see 7 watts draw right there. And if I do Kilo Mike 9 Golf KM9G, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. We pulled about 35 watts out on the peak there. All right, and now the fun begins. I have the EBL battery with the cigarette lighter plug and a USB-C plug that runs the Raspberry Pi. The cigarette lighter plug is going over to our old friend, the ICOM 705, and that's how we are powering the station today. To give it an even fighting chance, I also took the battery off the back of the ICOM 705, which is why it's sitting up there. And we're gonna run this battery dead using the Pi and the 705 do an FTA. Let's see how long we can make this last. We're at 100% to start. Let's turn the radio on. No battery, no RF power, because I had that turned down from something I was doing last night. We'll turn it up to 100%. We'll change our mode to SSB to the other SSB and data, but that would happen when I launch the FT8 software anyway. And the Raspberry Pi, you can see that light is on, which is interesting, because I didn't have that turned on in order to turn it on. So maybe these two are connected. Good to know. It's booting up. Let's get some contacts made. When the radio is transmitting, we are 19 watts and nine watts. And then when the radio goes to rest, we're at three watts. So three watts for the Raspberry Pi, and then all the rest of the watts are consumed by this beast doing its transmitting. We are at 88% and I am shutting it down because I have some data to share with you guys. So here is the breakdown. This thing was dropping about 1% every 10 minutes. That means it's gonna take 16 hours to drain this battery on FT8 at 10 watts. That's a pretty serious amount of usage out of this thing. That's not even the best part. The best part about this thing is how versatile it is. I recently took a car camping trip solo and was able to keep my laptop charged, my cell phone charged, play a little bit of radio and do a whole bunch of other stuff. Use the included light to you know read at night and, and get changed and all kinds of other stuff. 
and it works great for those things. I am really impressed with the utility of a device like this. I have had a battery box like this for a long time. One of the things I didn't ever really want to put on a battery box was a light. I really didn't understand the purpose, but the light makes sense now. I like it. That's just the regular light. That does a pretty good job. But it also has an SOS mode that us hams are going to love. Double tap the light. And it does SOS. That's pretty slick. And let's turn the light on and see what it looks like. This thing works out pretty well. I am not going to do a complete and total battery drain on this thing at 16 hours of usage. I will, I will believe in the math. And even if the math is wrong and it's only 15 hours, I'm still not going to complain. What's going to happen is I'll probably do, you know, four hours here, three hours there, and then I'll charge a laptop, and then I'll charge a cell phone, and then it'll be dead, entirely dead. But I will have gotten lots of fun out of it, and I will recharge it and go all over again. I love the fact that this thing is small and compact in size, and it works very well for its task. One of the things that I don't like is I wish it would have had more USB-C ports. They do make USB-A to USB-C adapters. I'll include a link down below for those types of things for y'all, uh, just to make sure that you get it. It has three USB-A and one USB-C. The inverter works out pretty well. I don't have much cause to use it, but I did use it to play around here and there on a couple of things. Nothing to worry about there. I wouldn't expect a lot of uh, humongous draw out of it, but like, you know, if you didn't bring the right power cord for your laptop, you could plug it into the AC plug, but I wouldn't try to like heat your house with it. Keep it, keep things doing what things are supposed to be built for in the first place and you'll be absolutely fine. We made 32 contacts during that exercise. Here's the map in case you guys are interested in what the coverage looked like. I am at the Gulf of Mexico right now and I am pointed north for some unknown reason. I guess nobody to the south wanted to listen to me. Fine. Charging with a solar panel was fairly easy. It all worked out just fine. Take a solar panel, plug it in, no problem. Make sure your polarity works. There are links in the description down below for the cigarette lighter to power pole adapter. So you can plug your radio in using the cigarette lighter plug, the USB A to USB C adapters that I mentioned, and of course, to this battery if you are interested. I think these things serve a very good purpose in today's modern world, especially for me in my camping lifestyle. There's a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.